Hi guys, hope you are doing great. Our today's question is number of islands. It's a medium difficulty level question. Um, so given a 2D grid map of ones, that's land, and zeros, that's water, count the number of islands. An island is surrounded by water and is formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally or vertically. So it means that you don't have to go diagonally. Okay, it's just horizontal or vertical. So four positions. Uh, you may assume all four edges of the grid are all surrounded by water. So for example here, so one is, as the question states, land and zero is water. So these are all lands. But then if you see that this one and these two ones are adjacent to it, so this also forms the part of the same island. And then these two are also connected with these two, right, uh, horizontally, so, sorry, vertically. So this entire is a single island, okay? And that's why our, our answer is one. And in the second one, if you see, these four ones are isolated from any other one in the uh, matrix. That is why this is one island. Then this one, so all the four positions, horizontal and vertical, around this one are zeros. So it forms an individual small island. And the same applies for these two. And hence our answer here is three. Okay, so, so this is clearly a question on graph because we have to traverse this uh, array, this two-dimensional array, and we have to find out the number of islands. So we basically have to search for something in an array, which is a representation of a graph. So let's have a look at the methods that we can use to traverse this graph in order to find what we need, right? So pause the video for a moment, have a look, and come back. So I think here, um, given the question and the requirement for us to keep looking for all the adjacent elements horizontally and vertically until we stop finding ones, right? So that is basically you have to start from a node and keep looking level by level in the matrix until you keep finding ones, right? So. So that indicates that we might need to use depth first search traversal here uh, because this traversal is about starting from any particular node in the graph and explore as far as possible along each path in the graph based on the condition for the traversal or what is being searched. So in our case, we are searching for islands and we have to travel along each path in the graph for as far as we can. That is as long as our condition is met right so we would be using dfs to solve this and yeah let's get started okay so the approach is that we start with the first element right of the graph right or the node of the graph and if it is one first of all if it is one so we will be traversing all the nodes um and we will be performing dfs on that node only if it it is one and if it is not a part of any other island. So if we want to find out if it is not a part of any other island, we also need to keep another same size matrix where we will store whether this has been visited in the past. That is basically whether this has been a part of any other island or not. So if these two criteria meet that it is a one and it has not been visited then we perform a DFS on that, right? And um, if not, then we just traverse. So while we perform DFS, then we recursively perform DFS on the four adjacent horizontal and vertical line uh, nodes. And uh, yeah, and we mark them visited every time we visit them. So I think by the, once we start coding, it will get way more clear. So Let's start, okay? So um, base conditions first. So I think um, 
Um, so I think, yeah, if the grid is equal to null, right? Um, or you can say if the grid dot length equals to zero, right? Then we just return zero. There cannot be any islands because there is nothing, right? Now, so as I was saying that we also need to create a parallel um, matrix of the same size to mark which node has been visited. So we'll just take a Boolean array, right? Call it visited and uh, yeah, so the size would be the same as that of the length of grid and each of its row. So grid of zero dot length. All right. Okay. Also, we need an answer. So count equals to zero right now. Initially, we don't know. And let's see what else could we need. Okay, let's start and then we'll figure out. So we have to traverse the matrix. Um, it's really simple. Just have to do a simple array traversal. So we do this first, like print dot length, right? And I plus plus. And then for each row, we want to travel in that row. of zero dot length right because it has the same number of elements if you are confused about it you can always ask the interviewer whether the number of elements would be the same but I think here it's quite explicit all right so um, so the two conditions right if this is a one and if this has not been visited so what we'll check is if this is equal to since it's character right we'll just use it as character and visited of the same is equal to false right it has not been visited then we want to do a dfs so we do just we'll implement this method. So we'll do a DFS on. So we'll give it grid. We'll give it visited. We'll give it I. We'll give it J. Okay. Cool. And if it returns, we just have to increment the count. That means we've found one island. Okay. Fine. Now let's quickly implement this. So, sorry. Um, we don't want to return anything from this. So let's take just this. And, uh, okay, it's care. Let's call it grid only. And this is boolean. Call it visited. And it's I and it's J. Okay. So now um, we will be traversing across the four adjacent elements, right? In in for for every particular I comma J value, and it's very important for us to um, identify that whatever we are processing, and because this is recursive, it is not going beyond the limits of the of the whole matrix, right? So in any question of this sort, you always have to, um, almost always you would be using this condition uh, to check its boundaries, right? So what we check here is that if I is less than zero, that means it went outside of the array, right? Or because I is representing zero to grid dot length so or i is greater than equal to grid dot length or j is less than zero 
or j is greater than equal to grid of zero dot length so we have basically checked that this is inside the matrix and not anywhere beyond the rows and the columns of the matrix right so if that is all uh, if either of this is true or this is visited right so visited so it's already visited so equals true right or it's a zero so we have reached a point where we found a zero so we just say that zero okay so if any of this is true we return all right otherwise otherwise we first of all mark this visited because you don't want this same node to be used anywhere in any of the other dfs drills so that's why we'll just mark this as true first of all right and then we do a dfs on all its horizontal and vertical adjacent nodes so just call it recursively on grid visited and i comma j plus one and the same thing would happen okay because there are four neighbors to it right so it would be i j plus one i plus one j right and then i j minus one and then i minus one j okay and once this is actually done we should be able to return our result which is count okay let's try to run this Okay, that's taking a lot of time. Check. Okay, let's just disconnect and then connect. Sorry about that, guys. Let's run the code. Okay, let's try submitting. Okay, that's great. So yeah, this is uh, the solution, DFS. And I really hope you've liked this video. Please like, share and subscribe if you have. Keep coding and take care guys.